Good morning and welcome. Thank you for joining us on this wonderful occasion. My name is Jackie Lewis and I'm Vice Chancellor for Advancement here at Mizzou. And I'm pleased to be here this morning with University of Missouri President Moon Choi and the Dean of our True Last College of Business, Ajay Vinze, and to recognize some very important and special supporters of Mizzou. Today's guests of honor are extraordinary examples of the difference individuals can make when they have a passion for ensuring access to education. Talent isn't bound by circumstance and opportunity shouldn't be either. Our guests of honor believe this and have spent years working to increase access and opportunity for under-resourced and underrepresented students. Penny Allen began her law career in Atlanta in 1979 and has since become a leader in her profession and a passionate member of, ed of the education, philanthropic, and political communities. Drawn by her dedication to investing in the education of women and children, Penny resigned her longtime distinguished law partnership with Alston Miller and Gaines in 2008 to accept the head of school position at Atlanta Girls School, one of the most racially, culturally, and socioeconomically diverse independent schools in the country. During her four years there, she increased enrollment by more than 25% and led the school to its first years of positive financial operations, as well as a long string of firsts and bests around creating programs for the use of technology in the classroom, strategic uses of online classwork, and a fully integrated seven-year leadership and service curriculum. And her passion for education has continued ever since. She serves on a number of boards, including the Boys and Girls Clubs of Monterey County, Breakthrough Collaborative, a national organization supporting the development of promising under-resourced children for college, and our own Dean's Advisory Board in the True Last College of Business. And while she and her husband Charles are Harvard alumni, Charles also graduated from MIT, Penny formed her roots at the University of Missouri High School. Charles Miller III, Buddy, spent 13 years with Bell South Corporation, ascending to the title of President of Bell South International. Then spent 14 years of chair, as Chairman of Level 3 Communications. And Charles too is incredibly passionate about access in higher education. He served a three-year term as Board Chair of Breakthrough Collaborative, helping to ensure the organization's vision of greater development of underrepresented and under-resourced students. And W.D. Allen is a familiar face here on campus. A two-time graduate of the True Last College of Business, Dr. Allen is an adjunct professor of finance here at Mizzou. He also oversees the Allen Angel Capital Education Program, named for, for his and Penny's father, Walker, who was the longtime chief financial officer at the University of Missouri's Medical Center. The legacy of the Allen family is one of providing access and opportunity to students who have the talent and the drive to succeed but may not have the resources. And so we're incredibly honored that they've chosen to continue pursuing their passion, into putting their passion into action right here at Mizzou. And for today's announcement, I would like to turn the floor over to University of Missouri President Moon Choi. President Choi. Thank you very much, Jackie. And I am just so inspired to be here. And uh, I wanna thank the generosity of all donors, but we're gonna be celebrating a very special, or two very special families today. You know, this university was founded in 1839 with the motto of achieving welfare for the people as being paramount. And we were a land-grant university before the land-grant concept was formed in 1863. And that has continued for 182 years. And central to that mission is student success. I am like a broken record. I always start with student success as well as research breakthroughs and effective engagement. That's what this university is all about. And access, opportunity, and completion are central to that mission. And I'm happy to say, even despite the pandemic, through the hard work of our students, the dedication of our faculty, and the generosity of donors like you and the state support, we had the highest graduation rate in our history at 73%. We had the highest graduation rate for Pell recipients at 62%, 
which is significantly higher than the national average. And for our underrepresented minority students, we've also achieved our historic highs. But like all of you, I am not satisfied when there's a disparity. There's more that we can do. And just hearing about Penny's background, I'm inspired to be such a leader in the field, but to say, I'm gonna walk away because I have a commitment to do good. And the people that are receiving the benefit of her generosity may not realize it at the time, but that sacrifice was huge. And I'm so grateful to you. Penny, Buddy, WD, and Melody, Together, your families are gonna make an important contribution to the students that are here and the students that will come for the next 182 years. You have a long legacy of support for students and we appreciate that very much. And today, they're adding to that legacy in an incredible way. So I am honored to say that together, the Allen, and the Miller families are contributing $5 million together for support for <laughs> students with financial need. Can I ask the Allen and Miller families to stand? Thank you. This program will bring more support to students with financial needs, students who have the ability to attend the university, but students who may have to work two, three jobs to get a degree. And I see them working in our libraries, working in dining services, and I get inspired. So when we have gifts like this, where we can reduce the number of hours that they have to work, to graduate and to take the rightful place as productive, contributing citizens, I know that that's going to impact not only their lives, but the lives of their families. So thank you once again for that incredible, incredible support. And uh, we look forward to celebrating the positive outcomes of our students with all of you. Thank you, and now it's my pleasure to introduce the Dean of the True Last College, Aze Vinze. Thank you, President Choi. Uh, what a wonderful day. On behalf of the Robert J. Trulas Senior College of Business, I would like to thank all of you for joining us here for this wonderful announcement. It's an exciting day. Today is a special day for our college, and we are here to celebrate the impact that one family can have on an institution, our students, and by extension to the broader community. Today we also celebrate the initiation of a shared vision, if you will. It's a shared vision that joins the college's dream for business education that W.D., Penny, Buddy, and Mel, all of you have and what we have at the college. This vision, if you will, pays special attention to inclusion, diversity, and equity. Particularly, we focus on inclusion and what we call making our house a home. The goal is to ensure that everyone has a seat at the table Everyone feels welcome in our home, regardless of whether we meet in person or virtually. It also means that our students have all the support that they need to be successful. Successful both inside and outside the classroom. This as they pursue Mizzou degrees. The goal here is to make sure we identify all barriers and hurdles for our students up front and take care of them before they become barriers and hurdles. As a result of Penny, Buddy, WD, and Mel, your generosity. This idea is being mobilized today. President Shaw, I am thrilled to share this with the entire 
MU, and wider community. The Allen Access Program provides a concrete framework through which we can ensure that every student who wants quality business education can pursue one at the True Last College of Business, and that needs of every student of ours, varied as they may be, are properly supported. Our shared commitment to access is clearly demonstrated by this amazing gift, as well as the college's intention to raise an additional $12 million over the next 10 years to further grow the Allen Access Program. The scope of this initiative, $17 million committed over the next 10 years, shows how serious we are about enrichment and pipeline programs, our approach to inclusion, and our determination to support our students, both present and future. I tell you, I stand before you pleased, but more importantly, humbled by the partnership the Allen family has reached out to us with, and this is an ambitious project. With the support of donors like them and well-wishers at the True Last College of Business and Mizzou, I have no doubt we will see this vision forward through to completion. The next generation is ours to make and create, the next generation of business leaders and community leaders. So thank you so very much. Penny, Buddy, WD, Mel, to all of you, from the True Last students, alumni, faculty, and staff, a heartfelt thank you, thank you. We are so excited to uh, lead this opportunity, about this opportunity, because it allows us to lead the way in creating access to business education. And we thank you for partnering with us. Thank you so very much. It is now my pleasure to introduce one of our talented and accomplished True Last students, Jesus Oropesa. Good morning, everyone here today. My name is Jesus Oropesa, and I'm a senior finance and real estate major from Brookfield, Missouri. You see, I'm the first person in my family, oh. See, I'm the first person in my family to advance beyond the eighth grade. No one, not my mother, not my grandparents. Most of my family are drug addicts, underachievers, and have did nothing with their lives. Because of that, I've best been winging it. I've, I've, <laughs> I've basically went in life with no guidance. I've. I've winged it. But coming to Mizzou, because of that, was a challenge. It was incredibly difficult for me. I had no support. I had nothing. That was until I met Mary Beth and Heartland Scholars through the True Last Access program that I'm part of. That program is here to represent first-generation college students from southern Illinois and rural Missouri. See, many of the students, like myself, didn't have anyone to help them navigate any of this process. They didn't know anyone who went to college. They didn't know anyone who'd had student loans or even knew how to go about the application process. So we just had to figure it out. And some of us decided to come to Mizzou and honestly that was terrifying. It was terrifying because we were worried we were going to fail. We didn't know how we were going to pay for it the cost of attendance is higher than my mother's annual income, and we're a family of three. We're terrified of disappointing the people in our hometown who look at us because we are the one person who went to college, let alone a major university like the University of Missouri. And we didn't know how we were gonna pay for it. The financial aid process itself was confusing, daunting, and overall prohibitive for someone who'd never dealt with anything like that in their entire life. We are scared we can't cut it. But thing is, we are determined to make it. Heartland has gave us a community of close friends from similar backgrounds who can support us through every aspect of the college experience and that we have someone to turn to. It gave us a comfort zone. But at the same time, Heartland pushed us out of that comfort zone, giving us opportunities to go on corporate visits, 
meet individuals who we would have never met before, or in this case, speak for you today. And we've had a lot of firsts because of that program. Uh, for some of us, it was our first experience speaking. For others, it was our first suit, first laptop. Things that would have never happened otherwise. And we're grateful for these opportunities. But it has not been easy. It was, it was terrifying going to this school with no safety net. Um, there was no uncle or parent that we could fall back on if we can't pass or we can't cut it. If we fail, we fail. And that was very overwhelming. It was even more so overwhelming to go into my first classroom and see more people in one room than my entire K through 12. That was something I never thought would happen. Personally, had it not been for the Heartland Scholars Academy, I would have dropped out. Mary Beth knows this personally. Instead, I'm actually in four different student organizations, have a 3.55 GPA, and I'm in the Honors College. But I'm not alone. Because of opportunities that are provided by these access programs such as Heartland, we've been given a chance, and we are grateful. We're grateful for the opportunity that not only Heartland has provided, Vasey, the access programs, but Mizzou in general. We appreciate it tremendously. The thing is, we're determined to succeed, very determined, and we hope we make you proud. With that, thank you. It's now my pleasure to welcome Miss Penny Allen to the podium. Wow, I didn't know I was going to be introduced by that young man. Uh, I am uh, thrilled. Thank you. Thank you for that wonderful uh, presentation. Uh, you know, when I came here this morning, I reflected on when the last time I was uh, in this building, because it's been quite a few years ago. I first arrived on the Mizzou campus in the fall of 1969, and for those of you with a memory, and I was attending UHI, which for those of you who don't know where that is, that's the building right next door. Um, uh, President Choi, I sat on those steps and looked out and saw campus protesters with a siege of this building and your office. <laughs> Probably not glad you're there. Um, so anyway, I've been in around uh, campus uh, a lot over the years as I visited my parents and my brother um, since my high school graduation, but I think that was the last time I was here, and it is great to be back. Um, thank you for being here so much to celebrate what is, I think, a great day for the university, for the college, and frankly, for my family. So thank you very much for that. I say thank you, of course, to my husband who is here with me, Buddy Miller, uh, my sister-in-law, Melody Wilson, and I'm particularly thankful to be here today to celebrate this with a guy I've known and loved and had to deal with a lot longer than any of you, <laughs> WD. Um, and by the way, let there be no mistake, this initiative is named for him. It is not for me. Uh, for any of you who observed WD when he taught the intro finance class, and uh, maybe some of you were even in that class, um, you will know why I'm gonna start these remarks with the story I'm going to give you now. It was the fall of 1906 in Plymouth, England. There was a regional fair where there was a chance to win a prize by guessing the weight of the prize bull or ox. There were, of course, cattle experts, there were farmers, there were butchers, there were clerks, there were housekeepers, there were townspeople, there were young and there were old. No one individual got very close. But when you took all of the answers and you averaged them, you were spot on, well ahead of all of the experts. James Sirwicky writes about this in his book, The Wisdom of Crowds, demonstrating time and time again, and he talks about a lot of different things, but when you have a diverse group of people, if it's trying to find a lost submarine, 
or understanding the Columbia space disaster, the decision of a group of broad-based individuals is much better than any one. And I mention this story for two reasons. Well, first of all, WD repeated that experiment in his class. Uh, some of you may remember that. He would have a jar of jelly beans, and he would ask everyone in the class to guess what the number of jelly beans were in the, in the jar. No one got very close, but the average, time and time again, was dead on. Perhaps the most reason, important reason I state this, however, is that the reason, and the reason we are gathered here today, is that there's no business, no organization, no community that can achieve all it might without the wisdom of its crowd without the views and effective, effective participation of a broad range of people with all of their experiences. I'm gonna put it in somewhat simpler terms for an SEC school. Can you, imagine, can you imagine if you told the Mizzou football coach that he could not, he could, well, he could recruit anybody he wanted except those who were born in January or October? That would seem very odd. Remember these months, they will come back later in this speech. You can't pick a player who isn't ready to play. For far too many students, the odds against achieving a college education are overwhelming. And as, Jesus, as I heard your story, I am so grateful that you found the path to get here. All we need to realize is that the needs of these students go well beyond the traditional scholarship support, as he commented. They may not even be aware of the concept of a college education. And so we have to go out there and find these students. And if they are aware, the barriers are significant. It's not just tuition, it's housing, it's a computer, it's a suit, it's knowing how to have a connection to get that job interview or that summer internship. Diversity, Ajay, as you said, without inclusion is not gonna get us where we want to be, which is a university a state and indeed a nation where these students are part of the wisdom of our crowd. That is what the Allen Access Program is all about. It's about going out there, finding these students, finding or providing the resources of whatever type they may need and being sure that they are successful when they are here and can be, and it can be on our team. If we don't help a broad and diverse array of students come to and succeed at Mizzou, we are going to have the same problem the football coach will have if he can't pick players born in January and October. Hmm. What month was Michael, Sam, or Chase Daniel born in? One in January and one in October. Mizzou football without the two of them? Think about it, great leadership for the future of both Missouri and beyond requires that we provide the possibility of an excellent college education for all of our young people. I believe in the power of diversity, but perhaps the real reason we are in investing in Mizzou is best summarized in the words of Nelson Mandela. Education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. There is no greater mission for an educational institution, and perhaps especially a land-grant university, than to change the world for the better. And I'm frankly just egotistical enough to want to do that too. We hope that our gift will help do that and equally inspire many others, but we're gonna hear a little bit about that later this morning, to do the same. WD, you changed the lives of so many people. Thank you for doing that. And we enjoy being able to join with you to make this great gift. Thank you. Well, thank you, Penny, and thank you to Charles, WD, and Melody. Your family's commitment to current and future True Last College of Business students is truly remarkable. And thank you once again for your trust in Mizzou and for this tremendous gift. Support of our access programs is crucial, and you've set quite an example for others to follow. I'm thrilled to share that others are already stepping up 
to carry this vision forward, an additional $375,000 gift from Ernst & Young and the EY Foundation will support access initiatives including the Allen Access Program through the newly created EY Fund for Diversity in the True Last College of Business. Like Penny, Charles, WD, and Melody, EY shares in this vision of the difference access programs can make. We're so grateful for the philanthropic support of our partners who are committed to making these goals a reality, as well as a chance to get together today and celebrate these incredible milestones. Again, thank you all for joining us today, and please stay and enjoy refreshments and uh, company with one another. M-I-Z.